There has been a lot of Chinese regulatory crackdown on uh, on the banking industry and also there has been a lot of disruption coming through with fintech really leading that disruption. How confident are you of growth in the sector amidst all the uncertainty of the regulatory crackdowns and of course this escalating dispute between China and the US? Yeah, I think um, uh, financial technology, uh, fintech, is really making uh, financial services uh, more inclusive more accessible uh, for small businesses, uh, consumers, uh, rural people in China. It's very good uh, for the new economy. And uh, regulation uh, is uh, uh, very helpful uh, for fintech uh, innovation in China. We are expecting to see a, a much better uh, marketplace in the coming decade after the regulatory framework is in place. CICC, though, has said that this regulatory crackdown could hurt short-term profits and that we could see potentially only around 200 out of the 1,800 currently PTB platforms survive over the coming years. Do you agree with that sentiment? And I guess what are you doing at Credit Ease to make sure that you are one of those survivors? Marketplace lending is a part of our business. We are also in insurance tech and uh, wealth management. Uh, for the P2P marketplace lending business, as a market leader, we are benefiting from the regulatory uh, cleanup. So uh, the next decade, I'm very confident that uh, a marketplace lending uh, model for consumers will continue to uh, do well with the credit uh, bureau infrastructure coming to place. And also, I believe uh, marketplace lending can play a key role in the future in terms of uh, helping small businesses and uh, rural people because uh, China's uh, small businesses uh, are becoming digital. They have a lot of uh, intangible assets like their operational transactional data, not like uh, fixed assets that they don't have. And the financial institutions in the past uh, couldn't uh, serve this segment. And certainly amongst the growing middle class in China as well. One of our earlier guests said that fintech essentially is the biggest disruptor that we are seeing in the finance industry. What are some of the innovations that you think we could see in the next decade or so? Yes, uh, for example, like uh, uh, we work with uh, Amazon helping uh, Chinese uh, small businesses on Amazon platform selling to outside world. So uh, they give us uh, their operational transactional data. We evaluate their uh, credit worthiness uh, real time. Yeah, we also uh, work with like uh, a rural uh, population, uh, providing them uh, with like uh, uh, Internet of Things uh, technology for uh, their uh, equipment uh, leasing uh, opportunity. And uh, also we are in insurance tech, matching small businesses uh, with uh, very complex uh, insurance uh, products and uh, features. In the past, uh, uh, insurance solutions uh, were quite difficult uh, for small businesses to understand and utilize. I did want to ask you about your U.S. offshoot, Yerendai, because its profit fell 24% in the second quarter. They temporarily suspended the semi-annual dividend. Do you think that we could see a suspension of the full-year dividend? Is there further headwinds ahead? Well, I think uh, a near-term uh, regulatory uh, uh, cleanup is uh, having an impact uh, on uh, the whole market. Relatively speaking, uh, we are doing uh, uh, much better than the whole uh, market uh, uh, average. And uh, we are confident uh, that uh, uh, market leaders uh, will uh, go through this uh, regulatory uh, uh, framework uh, becoming uh, more clean. Yeah. Just one final question, Mr. Tang. You do have a Singapore-based wealth management unit as well. What's the assets under management here? Uh, we do about uh, 1.5 billion uh, US dollars uh, as under management, but that's for our wealth management business. We are a leading wealth management platform in China, helping high net worth, ultra high net worth uh, investors uh, going global and also working on succession planning for their children.